Hello, welcome to the MacView 360. On uh, this episode, we're going to go through how to acquire an ECG with your new cart. To power it on, on the top right corner of the keypad, press the power button. The system will take about 30 seconds to power on. Once in the system, I'll walk you through the new screen layout, and then we'll get into acquiring an ECG. At the top of the screen, you'll have your patient demographic bar. This will populate once you scan the patient information. In the center, you'll have your date and time. To the right, you'll have your heart rate and beats per minute. On the top of the screen is gonna be your battery life indicator. Uh, in my case, I have two batteries, they're green. Uh, just like your cell phone, as they start getting uh, depleted, they'll turn black. Uh, and the little lightning bolt next to the batteries tells me that it's plugged in and charging right now. You get about three hours of battery life per battery. So if you have the two batteries, you'll get about six hours of battery life. Once the batteries reach a critical value of 15% or less, you'll actually get a little pop-up in the middle of the screen, and the device will beep at you, alerting you to plug in the device. The batteries will charge within the device. You don't need to remove them to charge. To the right of that will be your Wi-Fi signal. The carts will transmit wirelessly. And again, just like your cell phone, uh, if you notice that you're not having any Wi-Fi signal, you may need to move the cart around based on your network. To the right of that is the drop-down menu. If I tap the screen, that will display the drop-down. Within this, we have several settings. We have the settings, service, a service snapshot. And one of the features that I like to show you is the standby. So if I press the standby, it will black out my screen. This way I'm covering my patient information and also saving battery life. To turn the cart back on, simply just tap the screen. So if you're not using the cart, recommend just plug it in and hit the standby button. This way you don't need to power up the device or power it down after each ECG. Below that is a power button, so you can also turn off the device from the dropdown or just use the keyboard. There's an about feature, so if you do need to get technical assistance, simply press the about. This will give you all the information, serial number, product information. And lastly, there's a help button. So we no longer provide the large 300 page manuals. The actual full manual is built into the cart here and it's very user friendly. You can search under keywords. So for example, if I just type in orders, it'll take you directly to that keyword and the chapters within the manual. To return, just hit live. Right below the dropdown, you'll now have start new patient. And below that, you're gonna have your new workspace. So unlike the 5500s, you no longer have to go into a file library or an order manager interface. Everything is built into this front screen. And I'll come back to this once we are about to acquire an ECG. This will also be where your hookup advisor will populate. So once you connect RA, this torso will populate with the lead positions. This is, again, like the 5500, it'll be green, yellow, or red quality. So again, we're trying to get that green quality. You can still acquire an ECG if it's in yellow status. However, you may have some artifact, baseline wander, things like that. So always strive to get the green quality. Below this is also a text message box. So this will be kind of your system warning area. So and it also will dictate where you need to adjust any electrodes. So for example, if I remove an electrode, it will tell me V2 disconnected. Also, for example, if maybe my paper tray is open, it will give me a warning down here. So a little bit of troubleshooting. If something's not operating right, take a look down in this right-hand corner. It will guide you to what may be going on. So in this case, it's not printing. I look down there and it tells me there's a little printer error. Just make sure I close that drawer tight. Next to that, I have my filters for uh, speed gain. I can change these if I need to. Otherwise, the system will default to the system standards. On this side of the screen, I have my mode and my display settings. When you power on the device, it will go into adult 12 lead mode, which is your standard ECG. However, if I wanted to quickly change to maybe a three lead view, maybe my precordial leads, I can quickly change between those leads to get a different view. If I make any adjustments here, it will default back to adult 12 lead for my next ECG. To acquire an ECG, we can use the keyboard, we can use the touch screen or the acquisition module. 
So let's start an ECG. Again, we'll have the barcode scanner for our MacView 360. I have a test scanner here. Hold the scanner close to the barcode, press and pull. In the instance that there is only one order, the system will search for orders first. If there's only one, it'll automatically populate that information. If there's more than one order for that particular patient, you'll need to select it from your order list on the right-hand side. If there is no order, the system will query for that ADT information, which is the admission information. So you will have patient demographics. However, your order number will be blank. In this scenario, I scanned the patient. There's more than one order, so I need to select the correct one. There is a time column. Based on the time, I can double tap the order. This is the only case on the 360 where you need to double tap the screen. Everything else is a single tap, but when I want to select my order, it's a double tap. It's going to say, are you sure you want to attach this order? I say yes. It's attached that order information now. I can see that order number is now filled and the, and the associated information. I can enter in my technician ID and then hit save. You'll notice the patient information is now on that top banner and I'm ready to do my ECG. In this scenario, I have a uh, simulator already on the patient. Again, look at your hookup advisor, ensure you have a green quality. And when you're ready to acquire the ECG, you can either use the touchscreen, the keyboard or the acquisition module. So if I press the start ECG, it's gonna capture that ECG. However, I'm not quite done yet. Think of this as kind of your, uh, a preview screen. From this point, I can make sure it's a good quality again. I can expand the ECG with the double arrows here to get a full page view. Again, confirming it's a good quality, correct patient demographics. If for some reason I'm not satisfied with this ECG, I can hit reject. It's gonna maintain all my patient information, but brings me back to the live screen. So now I can adjust electrodes, perhaps do a better prep job to get a better quality ECG. And again, once I'm ready to acquire, just hit start ECG. I'll get the same preview screen. And in this case, if I am satisfied with that, I'm gonna go ahead and hit accept. Once I hit accept, it'll print and store that file to your library. Once it is done printing, you'll have a final screen from here. There's a couple options at the bottom. Your first one is gonna be transmit. So if you want to transmit at this point, hit transmit. If you wanna make another paper copy, you can hit copy. You can edit the demographics if you need to. That will bring this drop down. Or I can delete it, or I can hit done. If I hit done without hitting transmit, it's just gonna save it to my file library. It's gonna ask, do I wanna start with this patient or uh, continue with the new patient? I'm gonna hit start new patient. Once I hit start new patient, it'll bring me back to my start screen, ready for my next patient. If you did not transmit after acquiring the ECG, we can now access our file library. So on the right-hand side of your screen, you'll notice you have an orders tab, which are your open orders, your files tab, which is gonna be your file library. I can expand this list with the double arrows. This will populate some additional columns that I can use uh, to identify my study. There's also a column that says sent. So if your study has been already transmitted, there'll be a little check mark there. And in fact, if you try to transmit it again, you'll get a pop-up warning that says this file's already been transferred. Are you sure you want to transfer? If I found the study that hasn't been transferred and it's the one I want to, to transfer, simply select it. And now I can hit transmit at the bottom of my screen. It'll give me a confirmation that this is transmitted in my message box in the bottom right corner. To delete studies from your file library, simply select the ones you wish to delete, and then you can hit delete. It will also prompt you with a warning to make sure that you really wanna delete these. If so, hit delete. To return to the main screen, simply collapse with the two arrows, and we're ready to start our next patient. An additional change to the MacView 360 is going to be how to change the paper. Let me zoom out a little bit for you. Your paper tray is now gonna be located on the left hand side of the device. 
I can zoom in a little bit here for you. So unlike the 5500, where you'd press the button and it uh, pops up, with the MacU360, there's a small lever down here on the left-hand side. Simply just pull that tray out. You can use the same paper as the 5500s. Make sure that orientation hole is in the top left corner. Simply just put the ream in. I usually extend about a page or two over the top of the roller bar. You don't need to feed it through anything. And just make sure it's between the two edges here. Once you close it tightly, it will auto orientate itself for the next patient. The other difference you'll notice as well is with the acquisition module itself. We still have the same buttonology of the acquire ECG, our continuous 12 lead, and our stop rider feature. However, you'll also notice now we have LED indicator lights on the acquisition module. So if you're unable to see the screen, you'll still be able to see the green, yellow, and red hookup quality of your electrodes. That concludes the MacView 360 training. Thank you.